You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Morphology Podcast, a.k.a. Murph here, to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over. Each week, we will get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you may wonder, why haven't I done that yet? Well, today you meet Catherine Schartz from Lawrence, Kansas. Catherine really enjoys getting out on her bike, and it shows. In 2020, she gave herself a weekly mileage goal of 250 miles, and at the time of this recording, she's already surpassed 12,000 miles on her bike, including 13 century rides. I found her energy and story inspiring and hope you do as well. Enjoy. All right. Well, on the podcast today, we have Katherine Schartz. How are you, Katherine? I'm good. How are you? Good. Well, I'm excited to have you on the podcast because you have already accomplished, uh, I guess I should say we're recording this the beginning of October, and you've already accomplished something that I have yet to even put on my radar, and that is pedaling over 10,000 miles in a year. Yep. Uh, And actually, I looked at my total miles today. I think I've actually finished 12,500. Oh, my God. Gosh, that is, wow, that is, I I can't wait to talk about that. But um, let's start out by giving the listeners an idea of where you live right now and what the cycling culture is like there. Okay, so I live in Lawrence, Kansas, which is a university town that's about 35 or 40 miles west of Kansas City. Mm. And um, because we're a university town, we have a lot of, you know, young, active people here. We have a pretty active bicycle culture here. I'm a member of the Lawrence Bicycle Club, which is kind of the umbrella organization for other bike clubs. Um, We have about 250 members at any one time. Mm. Not all of those are active riding together, but the club has um, about five or six organized rides every week. Oh, wow. During non-pandemic times. Um, Our biggest ride is Saturday morning, which usually breaks up into three groups based on um, speed and skill. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a it's a fairly short ride, about 35 miles. But we go from one lake down to a small fishing lake and back. It's a nice, um, nice social ride that we do. And Mm -hmm. then there are several other evening rides as well as Sunday rides and. So in any day of the week, there's a ride that you can do that's Mm -hmm. associated with the Lawrence Bicycle Club. And what sort Um, of one of oh, go ahead with the cycling club? Like, what sort of entity um, oversees that club? Like, is it a nonprofit organization or is it a statewide run organization? No, this is a nonprofit organization. Oh, nice. We have a board of directors. I'm I'm on the board. I'm the secretary for the board. So there are nine of us who meet um, once a month. And our our main mission it, it is a nonprofit. Our main mission is to support cycling in mm-hmm. Douglas County, which is pretty simple. But um, so what we do is we oversee those rides. We have three big um, rides each year, which people pay for, and and it's a you know supported. Right. One is called the Lizard Under the Skillet, which is in July. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, the first time I did that, I said, there's two words in that title I don't really like associated <laughs> with bicycling. That's Lizard and Skillet. Um, <laughs> we start early in the morning and it's a, um, the, the longest portion of that is about 60 miles or you can do shorter versions of that. And then in October, we have one that's called the Octoginta. And last year we had our 50th annual Octoginta ride. Wow. And so the the main ride of for that is 80 miles. And, um, and then there are 60 and I think 45 mile options for that. And we just added a gravel option last year as well. Oh, cool. And then in the first weekend in November, it's our last ride of the year, we have something that's called the Chicken Creek Ride, and that's because it goes past Chicken Creek, <laughs> and it's a gravel ride, and it's it's shorter and um, a little more low-key than the others, mm-hmm. but um, just kind of to end the year. 
Well, with, just based on, you know, my own personal experience and just all the people I've interviewed, um, kudos to you guys for having so many people as part of that bike club because uh, it's hard to keep members these days and it's hard to mm-hmm. keep people active coming to the events. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely, we have something really for everyone. There there are several sort of subgroups in the community. There's a very active mountain bike biking club. Mm. And uh, it sounds surprising for anybody who thinks about Kansas. You don't think about m- mountains. But <laughs> this area of Kansas is fairly hilly. And um, around the lakes and around the river, there are some trails that the mountain bike club uses. And, and that group actually helps maintain those trails. So mm-hmm. they keep, you know, what they use um, up to their standards. Um, we have older riders. There's a subgroup of the Lawrence Bicycle Club called the Retro Bellow Riders. And they are mostly either semi-retired or retired. And they ride during the week a couple of days a week in the summer. And that's that's I got acquainted with them because I have always had Thursdays off and I was able to ride with them and they even though a lot of them are in their 70s close to 80 they are very strong riders and sometimes (laughs) they can go pretty far and pretty fast (laughs) and and then after they ride they all get together for lunch so it's a very social sure that part of them sure and then we have, of course, there are a lot of younger riders who are also affiliated with racing. And um, they don't ride with the bike club as much because they're so fast. Mm. <laughs> um, but they, but we do um, include them when we can. Mm-hmm. And then the bulk of the riders are, are interested in the, in the weekly rides mm-hmm. and, the, and the annual supported rides. So. Yeah, that's quite impressive. So uh, way to go, Lawrence, Kansas. Yay. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've ever been there. Um, I'm guessing that I have because it just sounds so familiar. And you said it was a college town. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, I don't remember if it was cycle friendly. But now I know. If I go there, yeah. I bet you there's a chance if I see a cyclist, they are part of the Lawrence Cycle Club. Probably. Yeah. And one of the things that I signed up for about four years ago just because I believe if you're passionate about something you should try to participate as much as possible and I signed up for a position on the multimodal transportation advisory board Mm. for the city which um, and our our group is responsible for meeting once a month and discussing anything that has to do with transportation and pedestrian or bicycle safety so I'm not one that's really very good at government, mm-hmm. mostly because I find it tedious. <laughs> right. You know, watching sausage be made, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> but what it's nice to have your, your at least a pulse on what's happening right. in the community. So that's that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I found, you know, I found that, I, first of all, I've learned a lot about how the wheels turn in, in local government. And then often I'm the only cyclist speaking up about some mm. of the issues that come before the, mm-hmm. the board. So mm-hmm. so I've had an opportunity. I, I go off that board at the end of this year. So I've had an opportunity, though, to to do that. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. so if we get into uh, you specifically on the road bicycling, you mentioned at the beginning that you have passed 12,000 miles of cycling this year, which mm-hmm. is just mind blowing to me. And I want to say congratulations, but um, I don't know if you're looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I read somewhere that you've completed a lot of century rides, and I'm assuming everybody knows what a century ride is, but it means biking 100 miles at one time, so in one day or one half day or whatever. Um, but is that true that you've done, I think I read 13 century rides in 2020? That is true. Wow. It's interesting because I didn't start doing road cycling really in earnest until about four years ago. Mm. And I, um, I jumped in by signing up for a trek tour in Tuscany and <laughs> just went kind of no, not knowing what I was doing. I tend to stumble into things that sound fun and then, and then 
and learn whether really quickly whether I like it or not. But I did <laughs> that, and I I found out that I really did like doing you know longer rides and with groups and um, and so after I came back, I started riding with the Lawrence Bicycle Club, mm -hmm. and at the end of the summer. Um, one of the people that I ride with asked if I wanted to do a century ride with a group one day. And I said, sure. You know, again, not knowing what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. But it was a nice, well-paced ride that wasn't too fast. And I was able to do that. And it was just such a feeling of accomplishment. You know, mm -hmm. that, that number is just a magic number, 100 yeah. miles yeah. one day. So I just, I don't know. I, last year I did four century rides for the whole year. And then just decided I was going to shoot for more this mm -hmm. summer. I wasn't really aiming for 13, but mm -hmm. here I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I've described this before on this podcast, but a century ride, for me at least, is more mental than physical. Um, and I go through these phases where you like the first 25 miles, you're like, whoo, it's gosh, it's not even nine o'clock. I've already done 25 miles. This is great. It's going to be a <laughs> piece of cake. And and then your next 25 miles are like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just getting bored of biking. And then that between 50 and 75, I'm just like, biking is dumb. I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> My legs hurt. It's just crazy. But then once you hit 75, you're like, oh, I'm almost there. This is great. Yeah. And then I yeah. do have that same feeling that you mentioned, you know, once you hit 100, you're like, oh, yeah, everyone look at me. I just did 100 miles on my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But Definitely. do you have like a certain route that you do each time you go? Or is it kind of just like today's the day I'm going to go and I'm going to see what where I can find? I have a couple routes that I will try. And, and, and here in Kansas, a lot of what we do is determined by the direction and the speed of the wind. Oh, sure. Because we can have um, the last time I rode with the retros, we had a 30 mile an hour headwind the mm. last nine miles mm. it was brutal mm. so so i definitely pay attention to that a quick interruption to tell you this week's sponsor is thirsty pigs a full service mobile event company offering beer wine spirits plus catering for any indoor or outdoor event check out more at thirstypigs.com now back to the show i started out at the beginning of the pandemic, the people that I ride with all decided that we were going to do solo rides for mm -hmm. a while until mm -hmm. we kind of figured out what was going on. And then at one point, one day, we all decided we would we would all ride out on the same route so that we were all we could at least wave at each other and, and still not be putting ourselves at risk. And um, so it was a route that I had ridden before, but one that I hadn't ventured out onto much by myself. So, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I thought, well, at least I'll see people I know. And, and it's, it's just 25 miles out to the south of Lawrence that kind of goes over some rolling hills. And once you get to the destination, you're at this little town called Centropolis, Kansas, mm. which doesn't even have a gas station. And right outside the city is this, or the town is this old Church of the Brethren kind of white wooden building, you know, just sitting out there, just sort of in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. on the outskirts of this little town. And the parking lot has about 10 big oak trees, oh. huge old oak trees. And, you know, I pulled up there and it was, a, it was late in the spring. It was so peaceful. I mean, I looked out over these fields that had wheat growing in them, and it was kind of waving in this wind, and it was quiet. I couldn't hear a car at all, and I was just looking out over this Kansas countryside, and I thought, this is my, this is my oasis. Suddenly, I just fell in love with that spot. The ride out there is, like I said, it's 25 miles, so by the time I get back home, it's 50 miles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started doing that ride just, just to get to that spot and just to hang out in that churchyard for a while. And then I I realized that I could easily start adding on 20-mile loops and, and make it a longer ride. And before I knew it, I had figured out a way to add 50 miles nice. to it just by doing some of the loops that I'm – mostly I pick the routes – of uh, places that I at least knew the roads so that I felt comfortable being out there by myself mm -hmm. 
and one day I just did a century and realized that it was possible to do a century by myself. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got confident. And um, we had such, we really had such beautiful weather this spring and early in the summer. It didn't get too hot too fast. And um, I just took advantage of that Mm -hmm. and started doing centuries I was doing about I was doing one about every six or seven days for nice. a while. wow so. wow and being in Kansas um you know I'm in Iowa so as far as you know weather getting into uh the rest of 2020 it could be snowing tomorrow or it could be <laughs> you know like right now it's almost 80 degrees here in Iowa today and last weekend I went bike packing and it was 32 degrees. So it's just so different. Like, are you able to kind of adapt to weather or are you a fair weather cyclist? No, I can adapt to weather. I can mm-hmm. ride um, as long as, you know, in the winter time, as long as the wind isn't too fierce, making mm-hmm. it colder. Yeah. And as long as there's no ice, I'll, I'll give it a try. Sure. Just to get out there and ride. Sure. So. Well, speaking of riding, let's get into this uh, 12,000 miles this year. Um, it's like, I'm sure that you know, it's, it's it's something that not very many people can accomplish or have accomplished. So that in itself is just amazing. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so tell the listeners how you've been able to get this many miles in already. Okay. First of all, I'm a, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner and... Mm. Up until this summer, I was working 32 hours a week. And even when I was working, I was finding a way to get out on the bike at least for 20 to 30 miles Mm -hmm. a day, Mm -hmm. either by going early in the morning before I left for work or getting on the bike in the evening when I got home. And as long, you know, in the summertime, that's pretty easy to do because we have daylight. And so once the pandemic started, we started working from home a lot. And I was doing a lot of telehealth, but because I didn't have the 45 minute commute each way, each day I had a lot more time on my hands. And um, on the days when I normally would have had office time, I was working from home. Mm -hmm. And because of the pandemic, there really wasn't a lot of working from home that I had to do because a lot of my administrative time was involved calling patients and following up from clinic visits and yeah. we, we just weren't doing those so yeah, yeah so I just had a lot of extra time on my hands and the first thing I thought of doing was getting on the bike so and you just never stopped <laughs> I never stopped so my yeah my my rides last year I would think that 30 miles was sort of a minimum amount and that increased to about 50 miles a ride so I was able just to increase oh, okay my time on the bike and add to my daily miles and as a typical ride are you mostly a road rider or do you do gravel I'm I mostly do road riding sure it's okay. my favorite so mm-hmm. yeah it's I would say I would say this year I've probably done maybe 200 miles of gravel. Oh, out of that 12,000? Yeah. Wow. So a lot of people always want me to ask uh, the people I interview what sort of bicycle or bicycles that you ride. So my my main ride is a Trek Damani mm. SL7. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it's a carbon frame, so it's nice and light. I love that bike. Mm-hmm. So and then for gravel, I have a specialized diverge, mm-hmm. which which I also like. I just gravel's just not my my first go to. Mm-hmm. And how about a couple uh, great routes or rides? Like, are you, um, you know, you you described your peaceful place in the churchyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other like great places that you ride that maybe people could look up on a map? Mm-hmm. So so I live on the north west corner of, of town and it's right next to the bike trail that connects to you know, there's a, a loop around town but it also if you get on the loop you can kind of get out of town pretty quickly because mm. it connects to the to the road so so I can go around the lake which is close by or I can go out to that fishing lake and then um, there are some small towns that are close by I like to always have at least one small town as a dash destination just mm-hmm. so I have a sag stop. I mostly go out to the south around Kansas. There's nothing that really stands out as 
as special, I would say, just within my range of what I would be willing to do alone. Mm -hmm. Um, But I go to Baldwin City, which is another, it's a little, little tiny college town. There's a small Methodist university there that's very pretty. I go there. Um, I definitely have noticed, um, especially since the pandemic, when I do solo rides, I choose a lot more less traffic type roads. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, like you said, I want to have a town or something that I can stop in and either regroup or uh, make sure somebody knows (laughs) I'm still there. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's kind of what I do. And we have we have a lot of good paved roads that are are fairly low traffic. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of know which time of day is best to be on those roads. So Mm -hmm. I stick to those. Yeah. Well, what would you say motivates you to jump on the bike? I love it. It's it's how when I was working, and I and I do have to say that actually I retired just oh, a week ago. Congratulations! So, wow. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I'll talk kind of more about that later. But when sure. I was working, um, you know, just any anything in healthcare is stressful. Just be, you know, if nothing else, because we're busy all the time, and so it was a way to get the day out of my head Mm -hmm. at the end of the day and and just kind of de-stress but the other thing I found I'm not a person that can sit still very easily Mm -hmm. you know and I have I have friends who actually sit and meditate every day they're able to do that calming thing where they kind of quiet their brain and and meditate but I've never been able to do that but I found you know several years ago that when I was out on a bike and riding, you know, I don't, I don't listen to music when I'm riding because I want to be able to hear traffic. But when I'm out there, just kind of with that repetitive physical motion that you get on the bike and the quiet and the peace, the peacefulness of the countryside, I found that if there was a problem or something that I was working through, you know, even without actively thinking about it, I would find that the answers would sort of come to me mm-hmm. there, which is sort of what meditation is. Yeah, so I was going to say, meditative. Yeah. yeah, I definitely yeah. consider cycling to be a form of meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we're moving, but it's it's so similar as far as mm-hmm. for me, calming the brain down. A quick interruption to tell you this week's podcast is sponsored by Lizard Lips Lip Balm. These great lip balms contain natural ingredients, come in a variety of flavors, and you can choose certified organic or balms with sun protection. Check it out at lizardlips.net. Now back to the show. Even though I'm riding through the same countryside every day, I'm just always amazed by how just how it changes, you know, just the color of the of the vegetation or the, you know, watching the wheat grow from this little green stubble in the ground to, you know, turning into this golden sea of waving grass. And then, you know, or you, you said you're from Iowa, so you know what the corn does. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, it starts out as those little plants and you know that in three weeks it's going to be taller than you. Right. And, you know, and now everything's turning to brown and they're out there, you know, doing whatever they do with corn husks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. They're scattering it all over the road. I know that, but I, you know, <laughs> but it's just amazing to to watch all of that change, or or just to see the the wildflowers that bloom at different times of the year. Yeah, there, the n- nothing beats um, going on a bicycle on the same roads that you drive because mm-hmm. you see so much more and experience so much more. The smells, the looks, you know, like seeing small things grow, like you mentioned, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm always amazed when I drive a route that I normally cycle on, how completely different it, it seems. Yes, it definitely. It doesn't feel the same. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, um, you mentioned a few of these things, but I was going to ask you, when you're not biking, where can you be found? And you mentioned a couple of, you know, boards that you're part of that you are active with, but any other outdoor sports, advocating, any of those sorts of things? So even though I'm I'm pretty social, I can I love being, you know, with the bike group or, you know, participating in things or at work with my with my coworkers, but I'm also an introvert, which mm-hmm. means that at the end of the day I need to be alone and quiet. Mm-hmm. And so I read a lot and I like to watch movies, you know, sort of I was an English major before I was a nursing 
major. So, oh, okay. you know, I like those sorts of English major things, yeah, yeah. you know, movies with a, a real plot. And, and so I do a lot of that. I read and, and um, I'm active in political things, just mostly by keeping really informed and, mm-hmm. you know, definitely reading through the, I have the electronic New York times and I read most of that every day. Mm-hmm. So, so now that you have uh, taken the plunge into retirement, um, what's your future for miles on the bike? Like, are you going to keep biking or are you just hanging the bike up? Oh, no, I'm going to keep right biking for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the other One of the other things I really, really like to do is travel. And I, lo- I love to be in Europe and I love to go all over the United States. And if I can combine that with biking, it's yeah. even better. So I, I did have three biking trips planned this year. One was in the Shenandoah River Valley. That was supposed to have happened in April. And then I was going to ride the Horsey 100 in Kentucky in May. And then a couple of weeks ago, I was I was supposed to be in the Dalmatian coast in Croatia with another truck tour. And so none of those happened because of the pandemic. And so as soon as I can, I, I definitely plan to travel again. Sure, sure. I'm, I am going with a small group. We're going to, they've got the social distancing figured out, but I've got a small group planned to go to Arkansas next week hmm. into the mountains. So it will be, it's, I did it last year. It's seven days of, of riding. I think the total is about 500 miles with 30,000 feet of climbing. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds... I'm kidding. I know I did it last year, and I remember that it was difficult, and this year I'm really sort of freaking out about it. <laughs> so I know I can I know I know can do it, but yeah. I'm almost dreading it, honestly. And Croatia sounds amazing in itself. Have you mm-hmm. been there before? Never. I, I actually took two years of Croatian in college, for my language requirement and I've always wanted to go there and um, I still plan to if I can get there in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. Well when you look at um, you know your energy unending energy wanting to be on the bicycle and get back on the bicycle each day any advice you'd give someone who needs a push you know maybe not to do thousands and thousands of miles (laughs) but just to get on their bike. For me, it was about setting goals and just seeing if I could do it. I wasn't necessarily tied to it, but I wanted, I, I always try to push my limits a little bit just mm-hmm. to see what I'm capable of. And so I learned early on in almost everything that if I set a goal, it's easier to manage if I can break it down into smaller short-term goals. Mm-hmm. So, so I just... Last year, I had a goal of 200 miles a week, and I increased that to 250 Mm. this year, Mm. just because I had more time. And so um, most of the time I went over, I had like 300 miles, and sometimes a couple weeks I had 400 miles a week. Wow, that's great. So so having that goal just kind of keeps me on track toward Mm. it. I have have a Strava account, so it helps me watch to see where I am. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, most of the summer, I was way ahead of, of where they said I should have been to, to meet that goal of 10,000 miles. So. Sure. Have you put in a new goal for the rest of this year? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because if I have that sitting there looking at me, I'm yes. also kind of OCD about things, <laughs> then I'm going to push it. And I'm ready to not yeah. push it yeah. too much. Enjoying the miles is, you know, as much mm-hmm. fun as making goals. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. any like organizations or passions um, that you want to talk about or support or plug? You know, for anyone, if you're passionate about something or interested in something, it's helpful just to jump in and, and participate. Like sitting on this local, yeah. you know, advisory board has helped me learn a lot about the politics of, of local government, you know, what it takes to get a bike path established. Um and it's, it's helpful, even if you just jump in on kind of a small um, level, yeah. you learn a lot and, and just participating is, I think, 
feels like an accomplishment. Yeah. And then serving on the local um, board has been helpful too, because I get to help with a lot of the things that they do. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, this is, uh, for me personally, you know, when you are out with your cycling friends and you're, and not you, but when people are complaining about, gosh, we need more trails. And, and then when you go to a meeting or you go meet with people who are responsible for that, that sort of thing, then you realize how much goes into it, how expensive it is, how, mm -hmm. you know, how to organize to get materials and people to build trails. It's, um, it's definitely worth the time to investigate rather than just complain about it. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It's, it's also, you know, for me, I like for things to happen and I want them to happen now. So I get pretty impatient with the wheels of government turning slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's, it, that's a good lesson for me as well. Yeah. Just to that. Well, Catherine, thank you so much for being on the podcast and talking about your goals, uh, retirement and century rides. I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you. Well, that wraps up this week. Thanks, Catherine, for taking the time to chat with me. I have to wonder, now that Catherine is retired with more time on her hands, what kind of mileage she'll have by the end of the year? My guess is going to be probably close to 15,000. Well, if you have a topic or the name of a cyclist you find interesting, email me at morphologypodcast at gmail.com. Please visit my Instagram page for daily entertainment and check out the Morphology YouTube page to find videos of some of the places I go with my bike. I'll leave you with this quote from the unwritten book of Morphology. This quote comes from Amelia Barr. Kindness is always fashionable and always welcome. Think about it. Think about it.